Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up Show, the best Gamecocks podcast on the internet. Today is Friday, February the 21st, 2020. On today's show, I break down South Carolina's big game tomorrow night at Colonial Life Arena as the South Carolina Gamecocks take on the LSU Tigers. I'll talk about the top storylines, players to watch for, keys to the game, give my prediction, and much, much more. Also, do have some news and notes to get into and an awesome conversation. We're breaking down South Carolina LSU SEC basketball, March Madness, with TJ Reeves of Three Dog Thursday podcast as he joins me to break it all down. Before we get into everything, this is a podcast for you by our friends over at New Ground Hard Nitro Lattes. Guys, let me tell you about New Ground. The brand, the company, the drink, absolutely amazing. Love this company, love this brand, everything about them. The drink specifically is absolutely amazing, especially if you're a big coffee drinker like me. They have two flavors, cafe latte and chai latte, which have 5% alcohol, so it's enough to enjoy casually. But also, if you're trying to turn up, have a good time, you're at a party, you're at a tailgate, you're with friends, whatever, it's great for any occasion. And guys, the drink tastes phenomenal. Every person I've given these drinks to, they love them. They keep asking me, Chris, let me get more. Can I get more? Can I get more? I'm like, yo, chill out. But either way, no, these things taste amazing. There's actually a reason for that. They're made with real coffee and tea, natural flavors, real sugar. They're imported from Holland. They're GMO free. You know, a lot of times when you're drinking an alcoholic beverage, you have to worry about, oh, I'm sacrificing taste to get the buzz I'm trying to achieve. Not with this. You drink this drink, you can't even taste the, the alcohol. You cannot even taste it. It just tastes like a delicious coffee drink. It's so good. Uh, it has naturally occurring caffeine in the cafe latte flavor or if you're more of a decaf person, you can go with the chai latte flavor as well. You can find the drinks all over the Southeast from South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, in any stores like Harris Teeter, Publix, Total Wine, Trader Joe's, Food Lion, guys, everywhere. If you cannot find it, ask for it because, like I said, they're everywhere and they are taking over the game. If you want to learn more, be sure to check them out at drinknewground.com and follow them on social media at Drink Newground. Again, that's Newground Hard Nitro Lattes, imported from Holland. Check them out, drinknewground.com. And follow them on social media at Drink New Ground. All right, let's get into it. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm Chris Phillips, your host of the Spurs Up Show. As always, appreciate you guys tuning in. Got a packed show. Very, very excited that you guys are tuning in today. We've got a lot to talk about, a lot to get to centering around South Carolina basketball. Before we do get into everything, a couple of housekeeping items first. If you're listening to this and you've left a review for the Spurs Up show, I do appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. I do appreciate that. If you have not, click the pause button, whether you're on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, whatever it may be, click the pause button, go rate the show, go leave five stars, leave your thoughts, your feedback. It's the best way to voice whether you like something, you don't like something. If you want to tell me, that's going to be a great place to do it. Go leave it five stars. It helps boost up the podcast, though. I really do appreciate, again, guys, the people that have done that. Also, if you're tuned in and you're not subscribed, I'm not sure what you're doing, click the pause button, hit that subscribe button, guys. You're going to be notified of the daily podcasts that come out Monday through Friday. You definitely do not want to miss it, so rate and subscribe, please. Also, I want to mention our YouTube page. Guys, youtube.com, go to the Spurs Up show hit that subscribe button for me. Trying to build up the YouTube page so we can do more live YouTube broadcasts and things of that nature. If you guys don't mind, please take five seconds out of your day. Go to YouTube.com, click that subscribe button. You can also listen to the podcast on YouTube. So there's another reason for you to subscribe as well. Be sure to subscribe to that YouTube page. I do appreciate it. Also, I want to remind you guys, next weekend, the Spurs Up Show watch party at Cotton Gin. Doors open at 8, tip off at 8.30 for South Carolina Alabama as the Gamecocks take on Bama in basketball. Same day as Carolina Clemson um, at Sager Park. So if you're in town, you're in Columbia, you want a fun place to watch the game, come out to Cotton Gin. That's February the 29th, Saturday night. Tip-offs at 8.30. Doors are going to open at 8. It's going to be an absolute blast, guys. Be sure to come out to that. And one last thing, check out the store, tsus.store. I've updated some items, updated some prices as well. You guys do not want to miss that. So, again, that is TSUS dot store be sure to check that out all right guys like i said we got a pack show we're talking gamecocks basketball south Carolina taking on lsu very exciting game i know it's going to be a rowdy rocks environment at cla before we break that down i do want to tell you about my friends over at ag south farm credit because the spurs up show is brought to you by ag south farm credit guys 
Most lenders don't understand land financing. Ag South Farm Credit specializes in land financing and has been doing it for over 100 years. They make loans for small and large acreage, hunting property, timberland, farm and pasture land, even home mortgages and construction. They have a ton of great benefits, including long-term fixed rate financing for 20 years, down payments as little as 15%. They have competitive rates and they pay an average of 25% of the interest back every year as what they call patronage. They're cooperatives. They share in their profits with their member borrowers. So guys, for example, on a $300,000 loan at 6.5% for 20 years, you would get back $2,770 each year. They have an experienced lending staff that knows land and knows how to finance it. Guys, if you're buying a house this year, next year, the year after, whenever you're buying your first home, your dream home, a plot of land, you want to make sure you have the right people in your corner, the right people on your side. Ag South Farm Credit is that lender. They are the go-to lender you want to go to. They're going to be there for you every single step of the way, answering all your questions, making the process as super simple and super easy as it possibly can be. One of the questions they get asked most often, my family and I are wanting to buy some land. What are my options on land loans, right? Pretty basic question there. We offer everything commercial banks offer, like balloon loans, but they also offer longer term fixed rate loans. So instead of a balloon loan where your interest rate expires and you, your risk, you risk your rate increasing, a fixed rate can never go up, but it can be lowered if the market allows. So the type of loan you get depends on how fast you wanna pay it off and what you think your future cash flow is going to be like. So guys, if you want any more information on the type of land loans Ag South Farm Credit offers, or if you have any other questions for them, be sure to give them a call, 844-AG-SOUTH, or visit their website, agsouthfc.com slash T-S-U-S. Again, that's A-G-S-O-U-T-H-F-C dot com slash T-S-U-S. Ag South is an equal housing lender, NMLS 619-788. So again, their website, agsouthfc.com slash T-S-U-S, or give them a call, 844-AG-SOUTH, and tell them Chris from the Spurs Up Show sent you. All right. Like I said, let's jump into it. South Carolina taking on the LSU Tigers. Six o'clock tip tomorrow night at Colonial Life Arena on the SEC Network. We don't even have to stress how big of a game this is, right? Before I jump into anything else. This is a massive, monumental game. Guys, if you can be, get your butts to Colonial Life Arena and make it a raucous, rowdy environment for the boys Saturday night. That's my PSA. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Um, you, you take a look at the LSU Tigers really quickly, 18 and eight overall nine and four in the SEC, uh, as a team, pretty good offensively average scoring over 80 points per game. They shoot 47% from the field, 32% from three and their head coach is Will Wade, which unless you've been living under a rock, you've heard his name before in different stories, not in the most positive light, but he is still the head coach at LSU. You take a look at this game in the top storylines. Again, like I said, the impact of this game and the opportunity for this Gamecocks basketball team to, you know, get rid of a sour taste in its mouth in regards to its last game, the last time it was out against Mississippi State on Wednesday night, a sloppy game. Um, you end up losing by three, but, I mean, a really sloppy game. You could hear Frank Martin, the postgame presser, just listening to his comments. He was displeased with his team's play. There's no question about that. You have the opportunity now, though. You know, coming into this week, I said this earlier, earlier in the week, if you will. Coming into this week, you didn't think you were going to go 2-0, right? I mean, you did not think that you were going to go 2-0 on the road at Mississippi State and LSU at home. You, you just didn't plan on 2-0. Well, here's your thing now. Here's your situation. I can swallow an SEC loss on the road. I, I can. I, I just – I can deal with that. You know what I mean? That happens. It's tough to go on the road and win in the SEC. Okay. But now you've got to come home and find a way to beat LSU. You just have to. If you're serious about making the NCAA tournament, making a run and getting on the bubble and getting in, you got to beat LSU. On your home floor, you got to protect your home court. I'm just so excited for this game, guys. I'll be honest with you. I'm so excited and intrigued for this game because, again, we're going to really find out what South Carolina has made up. And that's something we said going into this week, like I said, early in the week. I said that we're really going to learn about this South Carolina basketball team. We're going to find out what they're made of, bottom line. Um, again, I can forgive losing on the road in the SEC to Mississippi State, who's a good basketball team. It happens. But what type of character do these guys really have? You know, what, what type of intensity do we see? And, again, I do expect the team, coached by Frank Martin, to come out, play its best basketball in front of its home fans, and it to be a classic at the CLA Saturday night. But we're going to learn a lot. The bounce back opportunity is there. I'm just so excited to see what this team does. How do they respond to adversity? Because that's the difference between good teams and great teams. You have your good teams, but great teams find a way. 
especially when the going gets tough. Great teams find a way to respond to adversity. Can Miss South on a team do that? I'll be very interested to see. Another big storyline, guys, I don't know if you looked at the SEC basketball standings lately, but the implications for this one, and I mean really for every game, out, you know, every game South Carolina has left, you could, you could say this about it. But especially this one, you take a look. You've got Kentucky at the top of the conference at 11-2 and two in conference play. The next three teams, Auburn, LSU, Florida, 9-4. and four. South Carolina, Mississippi State, 8-5. and five. Then you've got Tennessee and A&M at 7-6. and six. Bama at 6-7. and seven. Then you go down the list from there. But the Gamecocks are fighting for that number four spot along with a host of others. And you'd like to get that number, you know, that number four spot to get yourself that first round by in Nashville. Because, you know, you, to be comfortably in, you're probably going to need to win a game or two in Nashville. You are. So you'd like to make the path as easy as you possibly can. Again, LSU sitting at nine and four, South Carolina at eight and five. I mean, you don't, I don't have to go into great detail to explain to you guys how much this one means to both squads. Hell, LSU's trying to keep up with Kentucky to try to win the SEC. South Carolina's not technically out of it. So, I mean, it's crazy how much parity we've seen in the SEC because, you know, for the longest time this season, you know, sort of the go-to, the go-to, you know, statement about this conference, the blanket statement was, okay, it's three teams, Kentucky, LSU, Auburn, and then it's sort of just everybody else. Everybody else is sort of jammed up. Now everybody's jammed up. Everyone is jammed up now. So, again, it, it's just crazy. Um, you know, it, it's, just, it's just crazy to see. And, and what can – again, that's what makes this game so pivotal. We can talk about the RPI and the, the net rankings. I know I keep saying RPI. I'm just so used to RPI. But we can talk about the net rankings, whatever, you know, how important those are, yada, yada, yada. And they are extremely important. And that's another thing that you have to factor in in this one. But the SEC standings, too, I mean, it's crazy how tight and how close it's getting as we get down the stretch. Another interesting tidbit in this one, two teams really on the opposite end of the spectrum in regards to recent success or lack thereof. I mean, yes, South Carolina just lost, but we're talking about a Gamecocks team that's won eight of 11 games, eight of their last 11. You take a look at LSU. It's a team that's lost four of their last five, and their only win coming as a four-point win over Missouri at home. LSU has lost at Vanderbilt. They've lost at Auburn. They've lost at Alabama. And then they lost to Kentucky at home. So something's got to give, right? Is LSU going to snap out of their weird funk, their losing streak? Or do the Gamecocks continue to play good basketball? Again, I know they lost at Mississippi State. But the Gamecocks are still playing good basketball. Do we see South Carolina, that trend, continue on and then win, them win their ninth game in 12 tries? I'll be very interested to see. Because, again, LSU was a team, top 25, feeling good about themselves, lose four or five, boom, you come back, to, back down to reality and back to earth really quick. So something's got to give. I wonder what it'll be. Um, another big storyline, can Mike stay hot? I mean, he's coming off a game 24 points against the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Obviously a career day for Mike, and he's having a career season. I mean, what a season he's having. The Gamecocks are going to need him in this one to play well, to play very, very well. You know, I'm, I'm going to talk about a little bit. Uh, I'm going to talk about the key players to watch for in this game. But LSU's got a ton of guys that can beat you and beat you down low as well. They're very big. They're very long. They're athletic. Again, a guy like Mike Kotar, I said this exact same thing. And listen, he did his job against Mississippi State. Reggie Perry – had no chance for whatever reason. He locked him down. Just 10 points for, for Reggie Perry. You're going to need to see Mike Coates over that same type of effort tomorrow night. Um, like I said, LSU's got multiple guys down there that can beat you. He's been heralded as arguably maybe the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. You're going to have to get that same type of effort for him. Not to sound like a broken record like I did talking about Mississippi State, but you're going to need that same type of effort from Mike. And obviously, if you can get the offensive output, it's a huge plus because what Mike did – God, if you can get your guard play going, you're going to be very, very hard to stop if Mike is playing that way. Final storyline, and I just talked about it, the guard play. Where is the guard play? I know a lot of people are like, well, Chris, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jermaine Kuznard, um, you know, he had 17 points. Yes, okay, he did. He had 17 points. But 0 for 5 from three-point range. Early foul trouble kind of derailed his start, if you will. 
And A.J. Lawson's simply not doing enough. Jair Bolden, what, had six points, nothing crazy. Trey Hannibal, a turnover machine the other night. I like Trey a lot, but had troubles holding on to the basketball. Where's the guard play? Where does it come from? I've said all season, the guys you can truly depend on at this point are Mike Coatsar and Jermaine Kuznar. I'll still keep Kuz in there. But where's everything else? Where's Jair Bolden? Where's A.J. Lawson? Can Trey Hannibal be better? Frank Martin said after the game against Mississippi State, we got to play better. Our guards have got to be better. And I agree with him 110%. LSU's a team that has really good guard play. Their leading scorer is a guard. The guy that leads their team in assists, this seems obvious, but it is a guard. Like, they have very good guard play. So the Gamecocks are going to have their hands full, and they're going to have to go toe-to-toe with these Tigers guards for sure. Um, you take a look at the LSU players to watch for. I want to start with one of those guards, and that's Skylar May, 6'4", 205, senior guard, um, averages 16.5 points per game. He leads their team in points per game, is second on the team in assists as well. A guy, true senior leader on the floor. It really all runs through Skylar May. Skylar May is one of the better point guards in the league. And again, like I said, Jermaine Kuznard, probably A.J. Lawson. Probably A.J. Lawson is who I see on him. He's going to have his hands full, but he's going to need to have one of his better games. Just simply put, he's going to have to have a solid game for South Carolina to keep Skylar Mays at bay and give South Carolina a chance in this one. Um, next guy, Trenton Watford, 6'9", 235, freshman Ford, 13.8 points per game, 6.9 rebounds per game. Really big guy, really long. This is one of the guys I was talking about Mike Kotsar is going to have to deal with. Um, really big, really physical, really long. Again, he gets his almost 14 points per game and gets his boards as well. So Mike Coates are going to need, whether it's Coates are, whether it's Levesque, uh, I don't think McCreary is going to play, whether it's Keyshawn, whoever it is, you're going to have to look out and take care of Watford. Really, really good freshman. Uh, and then finally, Javante Smart, 6'4", 205, sophomore guard, leads their team in assists with 111. Not exactly the score of these other two guys, but handles the basketball beautifully, gets it to his playmakers, LSU's got a really, really good offensive system, really good offensive scheme. They move the basketball around a lot. They've got a lot of guys that can make shots, that can make impacts. So, again, South Carolina going to have to do their best. Probably Kuznar's going to be guarding on Smart. He's going to need to have a good defensive game as well. Um, you take a look at the keys to the game. I'll start here. As much as I talked about the guards, I think South Carolina's got to win in the post. There are multiple guys from LSU that can beat you in the post. I think Mike's going to need to hold his own, if not win that matchup in the post. Keyshawn Bryant. Man, how good this team could be if Keyshawn Bryant could simply just figure it out. I want to see Keyshawn have a good game as well. You know, really excited for – we were really excited for the potential of Keyshawn Bryant after last year. He needs to get it going. You know, Frank Martin said after the Mississippi State game, he said, I, Keyshawn's all over the place. He needs to have one of those breakout games. Find a way. But the Gamecocks have got to hold their own in the post, if nothing else. My second key to the game. This one might be most important. This one might be most important. Protect the basketball. For the love of God, protect the basketball. You just can't turn the basketball over like South Carolina did against, L- or against Mississippi State, excuse me, and have any chance to win. Um, it throws off your rhythm. The sloppiness is infectious. It, it just it cannot happen. The Gamecocks have got to value possessions. Value possessions. you got to protect it. Treat it like it's valuable. Those turnovers pile up, and if you let LSU get points in transition – you're going to doom yourself in the long run in this game. My final key to the game and what I just talked about, transition defense. I thought South Carolina did a poor job against Mississippi State in transition defense. They're going to need to be a lot better. LSU likes to play with tempo. And, again, like I said, they've got a lot of guys who are elite scorers. You need to be good in transition defense. You have to be good. You have to be better in transition defense. I thought South Carolina was very poor in that on Wednesday night against Mississippi State. As far as my prediction, you take a look at this game. And I told you guys going to Mississippi State, I did not feel good about it. I, I just thought going on the road, I thought the Bulldogs were a good team. I thought it was going to be a really, really tough game, and I picked South Carolina to lose. And granted, they did. This game tomorrow night at CLA, you know, I've been giving LSU a lot of credit, and not to say they don't deserve it. They deserve a lot of credit. This is a team that, again, has a lot of talent, um, you know, on a, on a skid right now, but still a really good team and probably an NCAA tournament team. However, I feel good about this game. I think South Carolina returning home, you got punched in the mouth a little bit, sort of woke you up a little bit. I think the Gamecocks come out tomorrow night fired up, ready to go. I think it's a great atmosphere for college basketball at the CLA. The Gamecocks know how important this one is. They know they've got a split this week. I think South Carolina – 
behind a big day from Mike Coatsar once again. I think I think the guard play is much better. I think the Gamecocks guards are much better. I think they're they're not as careless with the basketball. Um, and you know, I don't think a guy like you know, no offense, I don't think a guy like Trey Hannibal sees the floor quite as much because I I don't think Jermaine Cousinard will get in that early foul trouble again. But overall, I think South Carolina takes care of the ball much better. And I think the Gamecocks return home and get a big-time win on their home floor. I got South Carolina winning this one 73-70. to Like I said, I think it'll be an all-out classic at CLA. I really do. I think it's going to be a classic. But I love the Gamecocks on their home floor to get a big-time win over LSU and move to 9-5 and in conference play. And like I said, put themselves right in the thick of that number four spot in the SEC with, uh, with just four games remaining. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. It should be a really good one. Like I said, if you can get to the game, if you're in Columbia and you can get to this basketball game, get there. Pack the house. Let's make it a crazy environment. Let's bring home the dub for the boys. We're not dead yet. We're not out of it yet. Our SEC tournament ho- – excuse me, our, our NCAA – our NCAA tournament hopes are still alive. Let's make it happen. Let's be an impact. Let's be a force because this is a very winnable game for South Carolina in a game again. I think they do win 73-70. to 70. Uh, All right, quick news and note, and then we'll move into this conversation with T.J. Reeves of $3 Thursday podcast. One quick thing, SEC Media Days has been announced Thursday, July 16th, 2020. Will Muschamp will step in front of the podium once again. I think he'll be the second coach to speak that day. So it's never too early to talk football notes, and the SEC Media Days releasing those dates, like I said. So Thursday, July 16th. Will Muschamp will speak just in case you guys were curious and you wanted to start counting down. July 16th is your day. All right. Like I said, I got a great conversation. TJ Reeves of Three Dog Thursday podcast. We break down South Carolina LSU in even more detail from the gambling side of things as well. We also talk about Frank Martin, the NCAA tournament, the SEC as a whole, and just the madness that will be ensuing over the next couple of weeks as we do get closer to March Madness. That interview and that conversation, guys, is brought to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. Guys, whatever you need tickets to, whether it's South Carolina Gamecock sporting events, that could be baseball, basketball, football, concerts, comedy club events, uh, professional sporting events, whatever it may be, SeatGeek is the way to go. Go download the SeatGeek app. Go to SeatGeek.com. Use the promo code SPURSUP, that's S-P-R-S-U-P, to save $20 off your first purchase. Guys, Like I said, whatever you need tickets to, they got it for you. They got a great ticket rating system, which rates the tickets for you based on the type of deal you're getting. So never again are you at the scalp. You're not going to worry about, hey, I'm overpaying for this ticket, or what did the person next to me pay? Or um, maybe I should go on the street and try to buy them from some stranger. Maybe the tickets aren't even real. And, oh, my God, am I overpaying? SeatGeek does all of that work for you guys. They take care of all that. When you go on there, you're going to know you're getting the absolute best bang for your buck. You're going to know, hey, I'm getting these good seats. They rate the seats based on the deal score. So you're knowing, hey, I'm getting a steal on these, or hey, whoa, I'm paying, I'm overpaying, I'm paying way too much for these, let me not get them. They do all that work for you. They're going to take care of you. So when you buy those tickets and you click that buy button, you're going to have that peace of mind when that transaction goes through. So again, guys, it's our friends at SeatGeek. Go download the SeatGeek app, go to SeatGeek.com. Use the promo code SPURSUP, that's S-P-R-S-U-P, to save $20 off your first purchase. All right, guys, enjoy this conversation with TJ Reeves of the Three Dog Thursday podcast. All right, joining us today on the Spurs Up show, TJ Reeves, he hosts the Three Dog Thursday podcast. It focuses all around the underdogs, which is South Carolina fans I know we can all relate to and respect. TJ, certainly appreciate you taking the time, my friend. Very, very excited to talk some college basketball with you. Well, I am thrilled to be on with you, and uh, look, for the Gamecocks, not unlike Mississippi State, who they lost to the other night, but LSU that they're about to play, whether it's Alabama or Florida, uh, mix them all up in a bowl right now. Arkansas probably in that discussion. Tennessee's over here going, what about us? We wear orange. Can't you see us? There's several different uh, programs right now that are probably vying for about one, maybe two spots. The Gamecocks are involved in that, so it's good to jump in here on the Spurs Up show and talk a little South Carolina and see what they can do for the stretch run. Absolutely. So, TJ, before we get going, let everybody know exactly what you do. Again, it's Three Dog Thursday is the podcast. You guys focus around (laughs) predicting college and NFL football underdogs in the fall, college basketball right now. Obviously, we just talk a little bit about the show, let everybody know where they can find you, stuff like that. 
Well, thank you for that. And yes, whatever it is that we do, we fool around with making underdog predictions. And I have some great handicappers uh, that are on the program. Uh, one of them in particular that's been with me this entire season and has actually done pretty well, including college basketball, mm. is Brian Edwards uh, of uh, MajorWager.com. So we, we give you insight, we give you analysis, we look at underdogs, and we just have fun with it. It's so easy to pick the favorites in all these things. And a lot of time the favorite is at home, so it's so easy to pick the favorites all the time. We focus in on the underdog. How is that pooch going to do, in particular, large uh, hairy double digit underdogs. We love those. So we just have a lot of fun, uh, with picking those in college football, the NFL. And now, as you mentioned, we've morphed into what is my favorite sport. Uh, look, I, I work for an NFL broadcast for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, during the NFL season. I love pro football. I love college football as much as anything, but if I had only one to watch, it's right now it's college hoops and we are headed to the best month in all of the sports year, and that's the month of March, where dreams are made and dreams are dashed coming up all across the landscape of college basketball. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of teams that are either going to have a great March or they're going to get crushed in one 40-minute game. That's how this works. And so we're headed to that. We have a lot of fun talking about it. It's Three Dog Thursday. It is found uh, wherever you find podcasts, on iTunes, on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcast. So, uh, you know, I, I look forward every week uh, to talking about all of this. And we're about to, Chris, get to the mayhem of conference championship week where the games are just a blur, hundreds of them <laughs> in those conference championships. And then we whittle down to 68 teams in the NCAA tournament, 32 games on that Thursday, Friday. That is a three dog Thursday bonanza. That is a pig out uh, uh, buffet of, of college basketball that we'll have on Three Dog Thursday. So that's what's coming in March. We're building to that here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I would argue that's one of the best times to be a sports fan is those first two days of March Madness. I, I absolutely love I that. believe those should be national holidays. Are you with me? Can we <laughs> get agree. some South Carolina legislation going? Because the productivity in offices drops dramatically. Oh, uh, everybody's trying to take a four-hour lunch starting about noon on Thursday and Friday. Those should be national holidays, Chris. That and the day after the Super Bowl, I'm 100% on board yes. with you. So we'll, we'll get working on those. So I, I do want to talk about – you're talking about the mayhem is beginning to start, and it really has begun for South Carolina fans. Obviously, you dropped the tough game at Mississippi State Wednesday night, but tomorrow night at Colonial Life Arena, South Carolina returning home looking to bounce back against LSU. You know, it's ironic, TJ, because you talked about on your show, you guys really focus on the underdogs. And I think the mindset of South Carolina fans right now is there's still a lot of optimism, but – I think a lot of fans are looking back and just kicking themselves for this team losing to Stetson, losing to Boston. Maybe there's some doubt, some uncertainty. But you actually seem to believe that the Gamecocks are going to be a favorite against LSU. Give me some insight on just why you think the Gamecocks will be a one- or two-point favorite on their home floor. Great question, and I'm by no means an odds maker, but I listen to the guys that do this a bunch uh, and do their own analytics and take a look and study what Vegas does. they got far more free time than I think you and I and a lot of other normal people have to look at it. Um, and one of the things that, uh, that just as a general rule that they keep talking about is in conference play, the home court is an excellent three- or four-point equalizer. So you may still end up being an underdog on your home floor, but they, they look at this as that home court advantage in conference play is probably worth three or four points. Now, if you're a team in the West Coast Conference playing Gonzaga or in the Mountain West playing San Diego State this year, that three or four points at home ain't worth a whole lot. They're still going to be favored by eight, by 10, by 12 on you more than likely. But in the SEC, again, in dealing with games uh, where, where teams are battling for position in the standings, for seating in the conference tournament, it would not surprise me at all. Again, the audience may know by the time they're hearing us what that line is. It'll be out uh, Friday afternoon, probably late afternoon. Uh, Vegas will do that. And by the way, again, this has been explained to me. One of the reasons why you don't see lines until about 24 hours uh, before a game or at least, let's say, 16 to 18 hours before the games begin is that Vegas knows there are such a, a vast number of games that if they were to put those lines out, let's say, two days in advance, if you had a South Carolina LSU line out on Tuesday and it was somehow 
uh, wrong, not not what it should be, then the South Carolina or LSU fans would have more time to jump all over whatever it is. Uh, so they give you less time on purpose because there are so many games constantly during the week. And the majority of the games, majority of them, have very little wagering on them and very little line movement. And I know you and I kind of talked about uh, a little bit on Three Dog Thursday and even off the actual interview that sometimes that line will, will open up and then move immediately. Like, for example, in this one, South Carolina might be a one-point favorite when it opens. And then again, suddenly some LSU fans and some others will bet it very quickly online sports books in Las Vegas, wherever they can get to the line, and the line might move. The line might become LSU by one or by one and a half, uh, depending here. So I'm very curious, but it would not it would not surprise me if the Gamecocks are a point or two favorite uh, in this one against LSU at home for what it's worth. A small one. I don't see either team being more than a point or two favorite. When that thing comes out and when the game comes off uh, on Saturday night, but don't be surprised if Frank Martin's crew is favored in this game with LSU, we'll see. Yeah, no, I, I tend to agree with you there for sure. I, I do want to ask you again, you're a guy, you guys focus on the underdog. And South Carolina, it's funny, you take a look at their last five games. They may be favored in all <laughs> five, maybe four of five, but I do want to ask you as someone that studies the odds, is friends with the Sharps, you know, just Frank Martin, obviously someone in the head, head basketball coach for South Carolina, someone that's really liked around Columbia, took the Gamecocks to the Final Four in 2017. South Carolina is no stranger to playing the underdog role. I mean, again, you look at their run in the Final Four, I think they were probably a dog in every single game during that run. What, I'll ask you, right. what, what makes betting on a Frank Martin team, what makes that such a good play to take him as the underdog? Well, there's two or three things. One of those things is they tend to ugly things up, which your, your fan base knows. They're going to keep it close. And that Wednesday night game was a classic example where Mississippi State was hovering around an 8- or 10-point lead and I'm watching, and many others are watching, figuring, hey, they're going to find a way to get back within five or get back within three. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened at the end of that. And some of that, again, is related to familiarity with conference opponents. You know the other coaching staff. You know a lot of the other players, depending. That has something to do with it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they're, they're a team that is good in the half court. They're long and they're, they're a good rebounding team as well. So that's those, those kind of things, even if you're not shooting well, even if you're not a very good three-point shooting team, you can make up for it by getting some easy baskets inside, getting some offensive rebounds inside. And they put the press on Mississippi State and sped them up a little bit uh, at times in that game last night. So uh, we'll see. And they did get the cover last mm-hmm. night. They obviously won as the outright winner as an underdog at Georgia previously. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they do have a couple of under, the, the underdog win as a seven-point dog against Arkansas. So a lot of these on the road uh, as underdogs and with success and also won at Texas A&M. So you have, yep. uh, I- at least in conference play, four examples where the Gamecocks have taken advantage as an underdog, if not outright won the game, Chris. No, no doubt. So I, I do want to shift and talk about the SEC a little bit, TJ, just as a whole, you know, with South Carolina included in that, because it's crazy. You know, we were chatting all season. I think kind of the mindset there has been it's Kentucky, Auburn, LSU, and then sort of everybody else. You know what I mean? Those were kind of the top tier of the SEC. Don't look now, but, I mean, you've got Kentucky at 11-2 and two in conference when you've got literally three teams at 9-4. and four. We've got two at 8-5. and five. We've got two at 7-6. and six. These teams are all bunched up. I mean, it's not locked up that Kentucky's going to win the SEC. I mean, when you look at this conference, I think it's a testament to how much better the conference has gotten as a whole as far as a basketball conference is concerned. But like you said, I mean, we've got six or seven teams fighting for maybe one or two spots to get in the NCAA tournament. Just break down the madness for us that is SEC basketball. Yeah, you're right. And and a good point that you made on the Three Dog Thursday podcast as well is if you can get into that four hole where every, everybody mm-hmm. thinks it's Kentucky, uh, Auburn, LSU, and then who's in the four hole? Right now that would yeah. probably be Florida. I'm not sure on the tiebreaker. Yeah. But if you can get into that four hole, you get a bye in Nashville. You're not playing until uh, uh, Friday if that is the instance because you're going to get a bye uh, into the quarterfinals. So – uh, that that's going to be important for somebody out of the group of South Carolina, Florida, Arkansas, uh, Mississippi State, Texas A&M, that whole group to be decided over the next three or four games. And let me give you an example. I'm here in Florida 
uh, where the Gators were, I don't want to say given up for dead, but they were in trouble. Mm. And this is how the season fluctuates. They were in trouble just a couple of weeks ago where they were, they were looking at a team that might end up being like an eight or a nine seed. Lo and behold, Mike White's team has now put it together. I know uh, Arkansas had Joe Johns hurt in the game the other night and not there. They're not the same team uh, without him, but Florida put it on them. Florida looked fantastic at home against Arkansas. And don't look now, but the Gators have, after, after uh, losing five straight games, including to Baylor, four conference games and to Baylor, five games in a row, they've now put three wins together. Very impressive at Texas A&M. Uh, beat, uh, beat Vanderbilt, which they should have done. Beat Arkansas mm-hmm. at home. Now they have Kentucky on Saturday night. Florida very much wants that bye, but it, it's not going to be an easy road because they've got Kentucky, they've got LSU at home, they then play at Tennessee, who again is trying to get in the mix yep. on the bubble, and they still got to play Kentucky at Kentucky to end the year. So it's not a lot that Florida's going to be one of those teams to get a bye. South Carolina may get in that mix, Chris Phillips. They may get in the mix to be a four seed and at least not have to play until Friday in Nashville. Yeah, speaking of those standings, I mean, it, it's another reason why this game is so pivotal tomorrow at Colonial Life Arena. I mean, South Carolina sitting at 8-5, and five, LSU in that 9-4, and four, and again, you've got three teams bunched up at 9-4. and four. I, I want to ask you, TJ, before I get you out of here, last question, put you on the spot a little bit here. The Gamecocks have LSU at home, Georgia at home, who they've already beaten handily on the road, at Alabama, Mississippi State at home. You'll try to get re, uh, you know revenge there on your home floor and then at Vanderbilt, and then you go into the SEC tournament. As of right now, do you think this South Carolina team will be a tournament team and be dancing in March? I think yes. I think they will find a way uh, to be right now. They may end up in Dayton. I don't know uh, uh, how it works with the last four in here for South Carolina, but there, I mean, there could be – uh, a couple of SEC teams that, that end up right on the cut line and end up, one of them ends up in Dayton, whether that's Gators or whether that's uh, Mississippi State, whether it's South Carolina. Let's see. Uh, it's happened before uh, where there's been an SEC team there. I remember a few years ago, uh, Conzo Martin, the Tennessee coach, was in Dayton, and then they ended up winning a couple of games on the first weekend of the tournament and made the Sweet 16. So there have been some SEC teams uh, that have been there. Let's let's see if South Carolina comes through against LSU, and I believe they will be. And like we mentioned, for Three Dog Thursday purposes, other than the Alabama road game that is coming uh, next Saturday, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know that they're going to be favored in the other games. They're going to be favored mm-hmm. against Georgia at home. They'll be favored against Mississippi State and likely favored in the finale with Vanderbilt in Nashville. So take care of LSU, and it's right in front of you for you to perhaps – have yourselves a bye in Nashville and be in pretty good shape to be in the NCAA tournament. Then all is well in the, in the Palmetto State, I do believe. Yeah, I was going to say, if nothing else, there's one certainty, and there's, it's going to be truly madness as we enter March with all these <laughs> SEC teams piled up. For lack of a better word, it's going to be true madness. TJ Reeves, thank you so much, guys. Be sure to go check out Three Dog Thursday. You guys know how much I love keeping up with the lines, with gambling, if you're trying to do so, especially as we get into March and March Madness. And like TJ and I were talking, <clears throat> the first couple days of March Madness, especially – You guys are going to want to know who to pick, the underdogs. That's the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Be sure to check them out. TJ, really do appreciate it, man. Look forward to talking with you again soon. Chris, thank you for starting the relationship with me. You hopped on the podcast this week, so thank you for the love right here on the Spurs Up show, and we encourage the audience to stick with us. Viva la underdogs on Three Dog Thursday. It's coming, brother. Absolutely. So for TJ Reeves, I'm Chris Phillips. We appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll catch you next time on the Spurs Up.